What's going on, my people? Welcome back to Is Rock's Movie Reviews, and we're going to be discussing our MCU universe as we continue in chronological order. Now, we bring you Iron Man 2, and uh, this movie was amazing. I remember it coming out back in 2010, and I saw one of my best friends at the time. <clears throat> and this movie, it really blew me away. Uh, didn't live up, I feel, to the original, but it did have more action. Uh, it lacked in story, but very fun movie overall. In this film, we get a world now where everyone's aware that Tony, uh, that Tony Starks is Iron Man, the billionaire inventor, and he faces pressure from all sides to share his technology uh, with the military. He's reluctant to divulge the secrets of his armored suit um, <laughs> because of his. His cocky, arrogant style, fearing the information will fall into the wrong hands. Um, with Pepper Potts, uh, played by Gwyneth Paltrow. In this movie, we get Don Cheadle replacing Terrence Howard as Brody Rhodes, the war machine. And in this one, Tony must forge new alliances and confront a powerful, powerful new enemy. Uh, this movie was, was really cool uh, when it definitely came out, like I said. Um, it made over $300 million in the box office, one of the first Marvel films to actually uh, surpass that amount. And this movie starred, obviously, Robert Downey Jr., you got Gwyneth Paltrow, who came back, Don Cheadle, who was an addition. We get a super addition in this movie, and Scarlett Johansson, who's introduced to us as Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff. And our villain in this movie is Whiplash, uh, played by Mickey Rourke who at this time was having kind of a, a uphill battle to get back on, you know, due to his uh, own personal demons. But um, he actually uh, was one hell of a bad guy. Although I feel he didn't get too much, uh, his character wasn't fleshed out to a T, but they did share a backstory that was brief, that did help us along his journey as one of the villains. But this movie did lack compared to the first film but I still thoroughly enjoyed it as a as a very decent sequel. Um, the first Iron Man was a great film because it was smart, it was exciting, it was classy, and obviously had a powerhouse uh, in Robert Downey Jr. who packed a performance of a lifetime. Um, Iron Man 2 is not as good, and it's lacking in some places, right? Being not as classy, irre uh, irreverent, uh, or not, a, not as exciting. Uh, maybe when you get to the about the third act of this film, that's when things start to pick up, obviously, because uh, it's the climax of the film. But uh, I felt like this movie did wasn't paced well either. Um, the characters, for me, are always a big thing, and in this film, the characters aren't interesting. Uh, they aren't as well realized throughout the story. Vanko is a one-dimensional uh, villain, which I don't enjoy ever. Pepper's character is also reduced in this, and that made her so endearing in the first because she had, you know, she had a presence about her. She had this studious manner where she always wanted not to impress Robert, who's Iron Man, but she was kind of his counterpart. In this movie, she feels a little off. Not due to the acting, but you can tell in the story, the way it was written, she didn't get too much to do in this film. And I think that she takes a back seat also because we definitely have um, Natasha, Natalie's motivations here, which take up a lot of, of screen time. And her motivations in this film are not as clear as they could have been, I feel. You know, you got the introduction of a new character in Black Widow, and it feels kind of convoluted at times. You know, the story at times is over familiar, it's over cluttered uh, with parts of the film that would have benefited um, from not trying to do too much. And it could have had a, a tighter pace, uh, especially the beginning. The script is certainly not bad with some amusing moments and ones that make you think, especially uh, towards the beginning of the film. But that of the first film has smarter humor. It's more intelligently structured. 
Um, I feel the film could have been longer, perhaps with some subplots being more explored, the characters better developed, and a little less time on some scenes. I feel like some scenes were just dragged on. You know, you have scenes that could have lasted maybe a minute, but instead they lasted five, ten minutes. They could have been cut down shorter. Um, they didn't really do anything to help the story further on. Gwyneth Paltrow was fun in, in the first movie, like I was mentioning, but because of how Pepper was written, she isn't anywhere near as much in the story. And John Favreau's uh, performance is rather annoying sometimes and unnecessary, but we grew to enjoy him as Happy Hogan as he's introduced in this film. Um, although he was in the last film, but you get more of him in this one. Um, like the first film through the film, it looks great. Um, it's very stylish. The cinematography continues uh, from the first film. Um, the, side, the special effects are in this film are not only superior, but they're top notch, man. They, there's a scene, the way the movie starts out, with him going to uh, this kind of like a Jacob Javits Center, but for Iron Man, and when he lands and then the ovation he gets and just that dynamic of it, him being a show off, I, I couldn't get enough of that. Uh, the movie's very vivid. I love it the way it's edited. Uh, the location works for me. The special effects also show that they invest a lot of time and effort and don't feel like an overload in this film. The gadgets, also great, starting with Iron Man suit, which gets better with time they're in the movie. Also with War Machine's outfit, not even outfit, but his machine, his gear, incredible, incredible, the way they, they put that to the screen. Uh, the music for me worked very well. Um, not quite as good as that of the first, but it adds to the action without overpowering or uh, bogging the pace down. The story, while having a little bit uh, too much going on and being over familiar, still does compel you. Is it too convoluted uh, at times? But it flows smoothly, pacing-wise, through the second and third act. Uh, there isn't a lot of action, but that's, that's there to show you because they, they have a little more dialogue in this film. Uh, they're trying to take you and they're trying to add to the future. And you could tell in this film, they try to do that a lot, especially with the inclusion of Scarlett Johansson, uh, Samuel Jackson, whenever he appears usually through a movie, you know that they're trying to extend not only a scene or a few minutes of a movie, but they're trying to extend it to possible movies. They they do usually do it during movies, the MCU, not just um, an after scene or after a movie usually do it and sprinkle in that, that MCU sauce that they usually have. And it's cool. It's compelling. It keeps you wanting to see these movies. Um, and although there isn't a lot of action, what there is is thrills. There's a lot of thrills and plenty of it. Vanko's entrance at the Grand Prix towards the beginning of the film uh, was very dramatic and what follows is equally and thrilling to see. And the climax, well, not as long, that I would have liked it, but it still outdoes that of the first film. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, him and uh, Iron Man and War Machine go all out on other robots, and that scene looked so beautiful. I love the way they filmed that. Um, you know, John Farber, although he played Happy Hogan, don't forget he directed this film as well. His direction still continues to be clever. This man is, is an amazing director with a mix of uh, nostalgia for comic book reasons. Uh, for comic book fans especially, like me, and themes and such that would be current by today's standard. The acting to me was fine. Um, RDJ definitely shines and definitely outshines everyone, <laughs> as he does. Uh, but even his character, I felt, took a little hit. Um, and there's great chemistry between them all, you know? Uh, Don Cheeto, Robert Downey Jr., Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, John Favreau and Scarlett Johansson, who her addition, I think, pretty much made the movie. She's a badass from the time she enters the scene to the last time you see her in the film. Um, also, I feel like 
Robert Downey Jr.'s performance is not as, you know, not quite as the powerhouse he was uh, in the first one, but he still has the zany comic timing and the ability to give off uh, emotional depth needed for once Marvel's most interesting and I feel multifaceted characters. Um, Mickey Rourke is menacing. He's a lot of fun as Vanko. Scarlett Johansson shows how well she can play because uh, she's fearless. I like the addition of Sam Rockwell here who plays a real dick. He's a weasel in this film and does so hilariously as a sleazy uh, kind of Iron Man wannabe. Don Cheeto also performs with an authority, which I liked. I liked him better than Terrence Howard, although I'm a huge Terrence Howard fan. But uh, in conclusion, not as wonderful as the first film, but it's still thoroughly uh, very decent, very decent film. Um, they definitely brought and had a lot of things right in this film. But like I said before, I feel like they were very underwhelmed. Uh, they were very underdeveloped. A lot of people are going to disagree with me. But I feel like Iron Man 2 should have been better than part one. For me, it wasn't. The third act obviously outshined the whole movie, which, you know, you want the ending to be awesome, but for it to outshine the whole movie, you know, and it, it not only outshined because of the action sequences, it didn't outshine because of the story, which coming into Iron Man for, for the second time, the sequel, I wanted to see a bigger story. I wanted to see it progress. Um, but this was a great way to lead into the next film, which uh, is going to surprise a lot of people, which was Thor. And we'll be talking about that in the next review. If you like this review, check out my next work. Hit the like button. Hit the share button, hit the notification bell. And overall, I give this movie eight out of 10, which is fair. Till the next one, peace.